Hey everybody, this is Trevor, and thank you for coming to my channel. If I could ask you to please like, subscribe, share, view my videos till the end, hit the bell notification, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, you're helping out to keep the lights on here at the uh, Pioneer Spirit Homestead. Okay, so with that being said, uh, I have many notebooks and I write things down and uh, I go through them from time to time here and just to find things that I've wrote down and uh, things that I find interesting. Something I wrote down here probably from four months ago and I know that it's uh, the old uh, cough 19 related article here but I just... It's just something I wrote down. I find it quite interesting, and I would like you to think about this as well. And and what I wrote down was, have you ever noticed that uh, your rights that are supposedly guaranteed under the social contract to which we live under, whether we want it or not, to whatever country you live, they're suspended during whatever politicians deem as an emergency so think about um well in this century alone um, uh you know your rights that get suspended during an emergency well 9 11 okay um i remember living through that and that was wow holy crap you know the uh i wouldn't say so much uh overtly our rights were suspended but I, I suppose you know not being able to get on a plane and whatnot i mean there were certain things that had to be i suppose done uh, at the time and obviously you know we rally behind our our politicians and say yeah, okay uh i suppose you can suspend a few things here and there but uh, like in the united states for example the patriarch came out and that's not exactly uh, freedom that's going above and beyond the freedoms that are supposed to be inalienable rights guaranteed in the constitution uh so there's one thing i i think that was you know people know about the patriot act but they don't really know about it it's kind of one of those covert things that are put out uh to erode in a way at your personal freedom now here in canada 9 11 didn't affect us in that way so much as well, yes, I mean, it did, obviously, airport security and whatnot. Uh, you know, the pat-downs and rolling my genitals like a pair of Vegas dice and whatnot uh, almost seemed, uh, I don't know, it just seems like normal play now. But, uh, yeah, so, so things like that. So things during an emergency, uh, politicians will suspend the rights and freedoms that are, that are, wrote out to us within a social contract so what good is a social contract then when times are good okay when times are good yeah i guess having it around is good but when times are are bad that's when we need our rights and freedoms like inalienable inalienable rights and freedoms universal rights and freedoms natural laws that are just guaranteed whether an emergency is around or not okay because i i and you do not have the right to grant nor take away a right that we're born with and i mean we can go into rights even further do rights even exist um that's a real mind bender one but for now, let's just say that rights do exist, and they and they you know they exist under a social contract. Well, fast forward now to the spring of 2020, and you know, pretty much anywhere around the world, you know, even the Chinese Communist Party has its own constitution. I mean, every country around the world, almost every country has a some kind of social contract. Now, I'm going to deal with the Canadian one here, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And it's put in quotation marks, which is funny because it truly, it, it, they're laughing at us when they put it in quotation marks. But we didn't have that. What is the sense of having a social contract? 
like today, as of January 12, 2023, you still cannot be a truck driver in Canada unless you've had a minimum of two COVID mRNA injections. So you, I'm still not guaranteed under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms the freedom, I guess, to, to live my life, to prosper. Okay, um, there are other, um, like uh, like healthcare system and whatnot. I'm there are so many things in Canada. You still need to be, you still need to have a COVID mRNA injection to have employment. So how is that free? I mean, we might as well. We, I mean, just take away the social contract here in Canada and just. Just come right out and say it. Yeah, we're a fascistic country or a, a communist country. Hey, at least that would be honest. So I just don't know. I just, I want you to think about that. You know, in times of emergency, when governments can easily just at the snap of a finger take away the social contract that we're all supposed to adhere to, what good is it? What good does it do anybody? We were supposed to, so, so, um, you know, like any kind of emergency rolls around. That's exactly when you need your rights and freedoms. And if they're going to have to be written out in pieces of fancy paper with fancy pen, then they better mean something. Otherwise, they're just pieces of paper that politicians are going to wipe their ass with. So... You, we, and I adhere to this. I adhere to freedom over safety. Every freaking time. Freedom over safety. Because the more you give your freedoms away, you say, okay, yeah, 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 you want to suspend the social contract? Fine. You're just, you're just giving politicians strain. And these politicians, let's face it, um, they're all millionaires. They're all millionaires, uh, which is fine. I, I wish I could be a millionaire too. But these people, I... I guess more so millionaire, maybe not millionaires, not good, but they don't care about us. So it's not that there's so much millionaires, although some of them become quite wealthy over a few years of being a politician, which how is that supposed to be? They only get, well, they only, they're only supposed to make a, a few hundred thousand a year, which is a great goddamn salary. But how do they end up getting more in millions? But, you know, that's, I guess, for another show. But for this show, I really want to stick to what good is a social contract when in times of emergency, politicians suspend it? Or when they get scared? Like here, uh, last year, February 2022, the politicians in Canada got scared. So again, they even further suspended the Charter of Rights and Freedoms and, in, and initiated martial law. Um, or sorry, they call it the Emergencies Act now. Justin Trudeau... Um, initiated the Emergencies Act. And just to point out, too, the only two politicians in the past 50 years that have uh, invoked martial law was Justin Trudeau and his father, Pierre Elliott Trudeau. And back then, they called it the War Measures Act. At least that was more honest, right? But it's, it's martial law. So... I just... I don't know. I want people to start thinking about this and how... How do you have freedom in time? Like, I mean, there's always times of emergency. There's always going to be a, a a cold and flu season that's worse than the, the previous ones. You know, you go back to like 1918 and, you know, 1957 and 1968, 1976. All these years, these are like swine flus and uh, variations of the influenza. Now, I... You know, I've asked my father, who's 80 years old, did they suspend anything back then? And, you know, he's like, no, no, you know, there was, you know, just, you just went about your business. You tried to, you know, if you were sick, you maybe stayed home a little longer. And that's, that's how things were dealt with. And that's how they should be dealt with. And we definitely, like, again, to this day, January 2022, I, I for years, I worked in a hospital. I worked in a hospital here in seven hospitals here in Canada. From 1996 to 2016, I worked through. <laughs> I worked through just anything that you can imagine between 1996 and 2016. Okay, I worked through Ebola, SARS, uh, 2009 swine flu, 
like every year there was a, a flu that was around. Sometimes they were bigger than others. Um, you know, Z uh, Zika virus and whatnot. I worked through all those. Never once did we have the Canadian, never once were the, uh, were my freedoms trampled on as an individual. And that's what these charter rights and freedoms are for. They're for people in, in small groups, minorities. Okay, and what is the small, like, what is the smallest minority on the face of this earth? It's the individual. And if we can't support the individual's freedoms to to live and uh, live in the pursuit of happiness, then what good is a social contract? Uh, definitely what good is a social contract in an emergency? Uh, whatever, whatever politicians are going to deem emergency. And there's another thing. Anything that comes around the corner, they'll just deem emergency. Oh, we have to suspend your social contract. Okay? So... Really think about this, people. Really, really think about this. Like, I just don't know. Politicians are going to come up with emergencies all the time. They always have, and they always will. So tell me, what good is a social contract if it's if it can't if it's not going to work for anyone during an emergency? So, you know, what's the alternative? People say, well, I, 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 I've been uh, looking at things like Austrian economics. I, I truly would love people to start studying Austrian economics. Um, how to live more in a voluntary lifestyle. Uh, mind your own business and I'll mind my own business. Okay? Um, and ask yourself this question too, especially with government, because they have a monopoly on force. Okay, they've had a monopoly on force, if you can't notice it, for the past <laughs> almost you know, three years, and I don't know where you've been living. But what other organization can shut down a society? Nothing. I mean, Walmart could shut down all its stores. It's not going to shut down society. Amazon could shut down. It's not going to shut down society. But a government, well, I, we should shut them down sometimes. They shut us down. And there's another thing. Okay, not so much shutting them down, but... They didn't shut down the, the money printing machines for the two weeks that uh, we were supposed to stay inside our houses and flatten the curve. You know, public sector workers still got their paychecks, but a lot of uh, private sector workers did get, you know, and the paychecks they got were just taxation anyways. And taxation is like a dog chasing its tail. It's like, oh, yay, he gave me whatever amount of money. But uh, that money just comes out of the private sector anyway. So, But I, I really just want people to focus on... I'm going to end this video here again. Just think about... like, Have you ever noticed that our supposedly guaranteed rights under whatever social contract from whatever country you're from... I was going to say company, but country you're from... Do you ever notice how they're suspended during an emergency? Okay, that's not right. And what what this leads to and what it's always led to is politicians creating emergencies so they can suspend whatever rights, I guess, that uh, the government says we have. So there we go. One ended on that. Um, I hope everybody's doing as well as they can. And uh, please, again, if you enjoy my videos, like, view to the end, subscribe, hit the bell notification and share them. Uh, greatly appreciated. The support uh, helps keep the lights on here. Okay. Thanks very much, everybody. Have a good day. Stay free.